Let's stay on the story. My next guest helped design the Boeing 787 avionics system. Faizen Mirza is an aerospace scientist and has been looking at the video evidence. And Faizen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Andrew. So based on what you are seeing, what do you think happened here? So based on the footage I, uh, I saw from two different angles, uh, I did not notice uh, the aircraft losing the control. So I can definitely see that it's a control flight and the aircraft struggled to gain height. Uh, looks like that, uh, this looks like a, a case of an engine failure. It looks like a case of engine failure. Okay, so, so tell me a little bit about that and, and why you think that that is, is, is what, what happened and how that would cause this plane to crash so quickly. So uh, what happens is in this phase of flight when the aircraft is taking off, uh, the aircraft needs the maximum engine power to gain speed and enhance the height, the altitude. Um, so what was happening at this point of time is that the aircraft was struggling to gain speed as well as the altitude and engine failure you know, could happen due to many reasons. You know, first reason could be a bird hit, another reason could be uh, for an object getting sucked into the engine like what happened in the Concorde crash. Um, bird hit happened in, uh, in, in the plane which landed in Hudson by Captain Sully, that was a bird hit. Next, uh, another, op another possibility could be uh, issue in the fuel system, right? Or fuel, um, you know, impurities in the fuel system or issue with the fuel system where the fuel system failed to, to provide enough fuel to the aircraft, to the engines and the engines burned out. Now, how much warning, if any, would the pilots have had that something was very wrong? In this situation, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the aircraft was just at a couple of hundred feet. So the pilot did not have enough time to, they, they got the warning. That's why they, they, they you know, released a mayday. They called a mayday, but they did not have enough time to, to um, you know, steer it or take any actions. Uh, what I can, what I observed from this footage is that uh, the pilot tried. He showed, uh, she, he has displayed brilliant airmanship. He tried his way uh, to balance the aircraft. Probably he was trying to navigate it out of the populated area, but that it was a very densely populated area. Um, but uh, unfortunately, he did not have enough margin to uh, to execute uh, recovery maneuvers. And Faisen, you were involved in the design of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It's the first time specifically that it has crashed. I believe it's carried uh, one billion people. Uh, the different aircrafts have carried one billion people. Were there any concerns before this happened regarding this jet? No, so yes, I was involved in the design of the yeah. avionic systems like the mm -hmm. flight management system, uh, traffic collision avoidance system, primary flight display, multifunction display, navigation and guidance system of the, this aircraft. Um, as far as uh, uh, in, the, in the design process, I mean, um, right now in the last couple of years, Boeing has been in the center of controversy. But in those days when we were designing uh, 787, uh, early 2000s, uh, Boeing is, you know, it, it, is, it is a good, uh, you know, it has a good record at that time as far as uh, following the safety procedures, aircraft design philosophy, like we, we follow an aircraft design ph philosophy, which is called as the fail safe design philosophy. And this is philosophy uh, forces us to design in such a way that even if any critical component fails, the aircraft is still safe. So um, also following the quality process and procedures. So Boeing was amazing at that. Uh, Boeing 787, as far as this, this aircraft is, con is uh, concerned, it's an, it's, it's, it's an amazing bird with the stellar safety uh, performance. Mm. Uh, so, um, I mean, I, I, I can not imagine in my wild dreams that something could go mm. this wrong to, to, to something like 787, machine like an 787. And Faizan, from your experience, how long do you think it will take for the investigators to find out the cause of this crash? Comparatively, it will be, it will be quicker. And mm -hmm. uh, the reason is that uh, 
the tail is up there. Tail was not burned. Uh, so, and the flight data recorder, digital flight data recorder, which records the cockpit voice and the digital flight data is, is intact. I, uh, I can see that with the tail. So it's just a matter of time. Uh, the investigators are going to have access, uh, you know, um, access to this uh, flight data recorder and uh, they'll start downloading data. So there are two types of data. One is the CVR, that is cockpit voice recorder, which records every voice. The pilot uh, talking to each other or talking to the air traffic control is that is recorded. Any alarm, um, you know, which equipment is giving up, audio, um, you know, audio alarm, that is also recorded. So that will be accessible as soon as uh, uh, the investigators have their hands on the flight data recorder. Uh, then the second part of this uh, uh, black box is the flight data recorder, um, which which actually records uh, data from mo more than thousand different sensors and equipment and systems and subsystems. Now they are just data; they do not tell story. So the investigators have to take that data. And then they have to piece everything together to to add a story to that, like what happened at what point of time, and you know mm -hmm. how every systems and subsystems were behaving every millisecond from the time the aircraft started till it crashed. So to answer your question, Andrew, probably three to six months, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, is, is enough time for for this uh, investigation to be concluded. And then just Faisan, just, just finally, how did it make you feel that this aircraft, for the first time, hopefully the last time, crashed when you heard this news? Obviously, you know, when, when you uh, give your skill, I mean, your blood and sweat to make a marvelous machine like this, uh, let me tell you, Andrew, for any aerospace engineer, um, who's, when they when they start working on design of the aircraft, when the aircraft is on the paper, to the first day that takes a flight, it, it it's it's a moment of pride for all of us. It get it gives us goosebumps. Uh, but when incident like this happens, this is equally devastating, um, you know, a moment for all of us. Uh, this should not have happened. Uh, I was in the flight from India to London day before yesterday. And the moment I sat in my cabin, um, I mean, I was happy, like, oh, wow, I designed this aircraft and I'm, I'm sitting and enjoying it. Uh, and this is a marvelous machine. And the very next day, I did never imagine in my wildest dream I'm going to get a news like this. It is devastating. Uh, Faizan, appreciate, though, your insight and your time. Thank you. That was aerospace scientist Faizan Mirza in Dallas.